everyone, and welcome to the last episode of the Wheel of Destiny, or at least for this session. You know, always three videos out and then gone for another few episodes. I'll be honest, I am kind of burnt out. I've been kind of stressing out about a commission I have to do, and I mean, that's obviously kind of my responsibility, nothing to do with really anything, honestly. And I also had to think about getting through the written driver's license exam, which I passed, by the way. And now I have to think about getting practice exams, and just thinking about what I have to even say in these videos has been kind of making me a bit tired lately. So if I don't sound very energetic, that's why. <laughs> anyway, so as you can see, the winner of this spinning wheel was Zuko, the Prince of the Fire Nation. So, as always, we're gonna talk a little bit about the show itself, where this character is coming from, then we talk about the character, and then I talk about the piece. You know that jazz by now, and if you're new here, hi! Why did you watch the last one now? <laughs> Go watch the other videos. So it's actually funny, I looked up plot synopsis for Avatar The Last Airbender just so I don't say anything that's maybe stupid and I found a website where there are like six different summaries of the show, like the synopsis. One of them is like very short, saying like In a war-torn world of elemental magic, a young boy reawakens to undertake a dangerous mystic quest to fulfill his destiny as the Avatar and bring peace to the world. Which tells you exactly nothing. <laughs> like, what's the conflict? Like, who are the bad people? Who are the protagonists? What do we need to know about the characters? With what kind of mindset do we go into the show? That's like, so bare bones. But I mean, Kenneth tried. Kenneth tried his best. And we should appreciate that. Then there's obviously the one with Katara. Very typical. Now, if you know the show, I don't think I need to recite it. Because I don't think I can really deliver it as great as Katara did. Some some of them are also really long, so I'm just gonna pick the one of Kevin Jeremiah Gaona. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. <clears throat> the world is divided into four elemental nations. The Northern and the Southern Water Tribes, the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation, and the Air Nomads. The Avatar upholds the balance between the nations, but everything changed when the Fire Nation invaded. Only the Avatar, master of all elements, can stop them. But when the world needs him most, he vanishes. A hundred years later, Katara and Sokka discover the new Avatar, an airbender named Ang. Together, they must help Ang master the elements and save the world. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Ang? Is it Ang? I've watched it in German, obviously, so all the time I heard it as Ang, but most people say Ang, and I mean, it's an American show, so... Yeah. I always hate these names that have, like, two letters in then you're kind of confused how to pronounce them. For example, Lloyd is one of those kinds of names. I've always pronounced Lloyd as Lee Lloyd for some reason. I can't tell you why, it's just that. There isn't really much about to say about the show. I mean, sure, it was something I watched as a kid, obviously. I think the first time I watched it was like when I was really, really young, when I first discovered Nickelodeon. And I'm pretty sure we watched like some random episode midway through the series, not like the very beginning. And I remember always being very confused. What is going on? Where am I? What just happened? What is this world? No, wait! I remember the first episode that I've watched of the series. It was the one where they talked about how Aang vanished, which confused me so much. Like, I had absolutely no knowledge about anything. I can't believe I just remembered that. And that was so weird. <laughs> Anyway, later on, obviously, my dad got us like a volume of the first season or the first saga, I guess, with the water saga, I guess. And then we've watched it all through. We had finally understood what the hell was going on. And then we just kind of followed what was playing on the TV. Because I think the TV kind of, I mean, the television in general does show the episodes in chronological order, more or less. Also, I don't know if this was 
anywhere else if any other channels did that but at least where I watched it maybe it wasn't Nickelodeon but on German TV because sometimes they would um, transfer Nickelodeon shows into like Super RTL I don't remember in which one it was but sometimes they also just popped up in the middle of the episode a question of what happens in the episode and then at the end of the episode they would pop up again with this question of the episode and then I don't remember if they showed you like the answer but I remember it was kind of annoying <laughs> Because it, it some, sometimes got like in the way of the episode of what was happening and, it, and I just didn't want to get distracted. Just stop appearing, god damn it! But yeah, that was fun. This is probably coming from a nostalgic kind of standpoint, so I guess I'm kind of biased. But I really want to say that Avatar was one of those cartoons that had like one of the best stories out there. It's very developed in its characters. The story is always kind of interconnected with another in some way. Zuko's character development is just fucking great <laughs> and obviously also the world building of how everything works how the uh, element bending is kind of integrated into society i think my favorite element of like what i would like to bend back then was water but to be honest i'm not sure if this is really because i would want to be a water bender or if i was just biased on the color blue <laughs> i i honestly wouldn't be surprised if it was the latter one <laughs> the only thing that kind of bothered me, I guess, at the very end of the series was that one giant um, lion turtle, I think it was called. This was something I always found very funny about the series, that there were always these crossbreeds of animals and that was considered normal and when there was just a bear, it was suddenly weird. <laughs> but yeah, that kind of thing where Ang suddenly learned how to take away elements came kind of out of the blue like I think it was actually shown like a sketch of this creature in like the one library that they went to in one episode but at the same time I feel like I don't know it felt like kind of out of nowhere and to be honest Korra did not fix it I mean I really did not enjoy Korra at all it tried to explain everything from the original series about things that you might have had questions for but honestly it was it was not that interesting I tried to watch Korra up to like the second season because it got kind of interesting with the ghosts but afterwards I kind of lost interest and to be honest I just didn't like Korra herself I just didn't like her character I didn't like how obnoxious she was at times. I mean, sure, one shouldn't compare her with Aang. They're two completely different people, but I think I've stated many times now already how a main character can ruin things for me. I think it's obvious at this point that I don't really know what else to talk about, so let's talk about Zuko himself. Zuko is probably one of the best developed characters from cartoons if I may say so myself like in the beginning he's very vengeful he's very ambitious to get the avatar and restore his honor as people like to meme it and later on he kind of understands what Iroh was trying to tell him he is not much of an angry boy anymore and he tried to teach and the arts of firebending and you know that nice episode with Katara that was nice speaking of Katara and Zuko I need to ask something did most of you ship Katara and Zuko because I'm seeing a lot of fan art for this kind of ship and I mean you know, obviously ships are a thing that's just kind of how, ha how it happens in all of fandoms but I'm kind of surprised how many really like this ship. I mean, I kind of understand where it comes from, but at the same time, it doesn't make a lot of sense to pair these two together. Like, they have to be a bit realistic in that standpoint. Like, sure, Katara forgave Zuko for betraying her and the group and, you know, chasing them across the world and trying to kill them, but I don't think that is necessarily the kind of spark you would need to have a romantic relationship. Just saying? I just don't understand how people rationalize this ship because I don't, I really don't see it. I mean, I can see how they became fighting partners, how they started to trust each other a bit more, but I don't see the romantic potential there. I just looked outside and I thought it was raining, but it was just someone sprinkling the garden. I think I need to go outside more. <laughs> 
Anyway, as you can see, that's kind of already it. I honestly don't know what else to really include in this summary or about Zuko himself. I haven't seen this cartoon in a long time now, so let's just talk about the piece itself. So I was thinking about giving the piece a bit more symbolic meaning and a bit more interesting um, elements to it. <laughs> elements and you know make the piece a bit more interesting but as i said already i gotten a bit burned out these days so i thought you know what let's just be simple about it let's just make a simple pose a simple background a simple fire drawing which took me an eternity to figure out drawing fire is really weird because at first i kind of thought i kind of got the hang of it how to do it in cartoon form but apparently not <laughs> I was trying to do the fire in my style, but the image of how it was in the cartoon just kind of got in the way in my brain and this entire time it told me, no, don't do it that way, it's not right, make it proper fire and <sighs> it's, it was hard, okay? I tried to avoid blurring fire whenever I try to draw it because I've started to see how kind of lazy that technique is but the more I tried to figure out what to do with the fire the more I couldn't really see another way around it so just, I just said screw it let's just blur the fire and I mean it doesn't look bad it looks all right you can tell it's supposed to be fire but I wouldn't say it's necessarily a complete success I'm looking at the image now and I might actually um, in post-production probably include some sparks into the fire because now it looks a little bit still kind of boring so maybe putting some fire sparks will kind of give it some more glamour. I had a lot of fun drawing Zuko's hair. I was thinking about maybe doing like a front shot of Zuko's face and giving like the left side of how he was at the beginning and then the right side be how he was at the end of the series. But I think we have already two of those kinds of images, don't we? We already have Loon sitting on the front and we also have Nesco who's sitting and both of our eyes showing with different sides. So at this point it would have been a bit too similar, a bit lazy. You can choose whatever word fits for this but I just felt like at this point it would be a bit redundant so no let's give him a proper pose to make him at least look a little bit cool. I thought this was going to be a good exercise in drawing a person from the back because I don't practice that enough and I feel like it didn't turn out too bad but I feel like the arm there is not a complete success either. There's something weird about the elbow. I thought it was good when I did the line art but as soon as I got to like the shading I realized okay maybe that pose doesn't make as much sense as I thought it did. But yeah I tried and it doesn't look too terrible. As you can see from the last video I stuck with the second layer of shading and also the lighting. I had some trouble with the lighting again here what to even do here especially on the hair I don't like putting lighting on the hair because I just had some trouble finding even the line art for it I had some trouble seeing the line art because this time the line art was a actually a bit lighter than when putting on the shading and that was something I wasn't really used to usually I'm I'd make sure that the hair or the color at least would be bright enough so that the line art wouldn't be covered but this time I couldn't really see another way around it and you know it doesn't look too bad you probably can't even see that but still <sighs> I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna figure out the rim lighting one of these days, but you know, for now, it looks alright. I'm a bit sad that the lower part of his body got kind of covered in the fire, but you know, that's what happens when you don't plan out things properly. <laughs> so take notes, kids. Plan out stuff. Otherwise, you get products like this. <laughs> However, the biggest trouble I had with this piece were actually the, the writing there, the symbols. Especially the fire symbol. For some reason I couldn't get it right and it's still kind of an eyesore. But you know, Zuko covers it enough so that you don't see how badly it was made. So you can still think it isn't too bad even though you can clearly see how the strokes kind of overlap, the lanes overlap. But you know, don't think about it. I like how the writing turned out. I usually don't really do it in that kind of way. Is that Japanese? I think it's Japanese. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if that's really Japanese or maybe Chinese because I remember hearing somewhere that Avatar is Chinese based, like the culture around it, but I'm not really 
sure about it. Especially, it's really confusing because everybody calls Avatar like the American anime. So you think about Japan, but it's not from Japan. So you don't know where the writing comes from. I'm pretty sure I've seen that fire symbol before, like in Naruto. Like, okay, not the fire symbol like in the middle, not, not that one. I mean, like in the um, writing behind the Avatar logo there. I think that was in Naruto, so I'm just gonna pretend that this is Japanese. Let's just pretend it's that. <laughs> I don't know how visible it is, but I try to make some contrast between the warm light and the cool shading so that you can really see where it gets warmer and where it gets cooler. So I had some purple shading in the sky. I wanted to put purple shading also on Zuko, but it just didn't really work with the colors. So I just kind of kept it with the browns and really dark red shading so yeah overall it's a really simple piece just something I did to not stress too much over it I tried not to get too detailed about it just kind of relaxing a little bit I'm sorry it's not an epic piece anything that really has a message behind it or anything that references the show but one I don't remember much about the show anymore it's been a long time so it would take hours to catch up on everything again to make a proper piece and we know how that ended up with the Umbrella Academy last time. And second again, I've been burned out, so it's just something very, very simple. Hope you can all forgive me for that. Now, what happens next? To be honest, I don't know. In a month or so, I am starting art school, so I'm not really sure how often I will be able to post videos. I know what I'm gonna post for like the last week before art school, but for the next few days, I'm honestly a little bit at a loss, so I hope you can forgive me if I'm not uploading as much. So, if you want to make sure that I'm, you know, alive or, you know, seeing what I'm up to, I'm most active on Twitter. You can also do follow me on other places like Tumblr and DeviantArt and, you know, Instagram. I've kind of been abandoning Instagram for a while. I'm just not used to the rhythm of taking pictures of my cat every day, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> So I hope you're having a good day, like and subscribe, and well, see you next time.